Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vision Intention Strategy, your social work mentor with the new Social Worker Magazine. My name is Dr. Veronica Hardy, and today I just want to talk to you about how to decrease the distance in distance education courses. Now, you may have noticed that over the past several years, due to the COVID pandemic, that many classes have transitioned from face-to-face, -face, in other words, in the classroom, to an online environment. So what is necessary to be successful when navigating online courses? Now, I know when I was pursuing my bachelor's degree or even my master's degree in social work, my technology tools were basically a word processor or even tape cassettes. But now you have so many tools that are right at your fingertips to help you to be successful during your education. So what I want to do today is give you eight tips to help decrease the distance in distance education courses. And the first tip is about decluttering your digital spaces, whether it's your cell phone, your laptop, a tablet. So basically going through and deleting items that are no longer needed or creating folders for past courses and assignments and putting all of that information into those folders. So basically removing things that could be viewed as clutter or forms of distraction or no longer needed for the new semester that you are entering. Now tip number two is about checking for a previous syllabus. One way to go about doing that is to look over the course listings for previous semesters to see which instructor had taught that course. Then you could send that instructor an email to determine if a copy of a previous syllabus is available for you to view. Now, even some universities include copies of their syllabi on their website. So you could check the website as well. Now, having a previous syllabus helps you to get an idea, a general idea about the layout of the course. So, of course, there's going to be a course description, uh, outline, identifying generally what happens each week, as well as descriptions of the course assignments. Now, the previous syllabus may have slight differences from the syllabus that your upcoming course will have. But again, it can really help you to have a general idea and support you in planning for the upcoming semester. Tip number three is to take advantage of early access. What do I mean by this? Sometimes when you have an online course, your instructor may make that course available for viewing a few days or even a couple weeks before the semester actually begins. And if your instructor does this, that is definitely to your benefit because although you won't be able to engage in the assignments as of yet, you can start to study the layout of the course. For example, if the syllabus is posted, you can review that and start organizing your schedule. You can also view the layout of the course. For example, what is the layout of the learning management system? The learning management system is where your course materials are generally delivered in an online course. So for example, course management systems may be Canvas, Blackboard, or even Moodle. In the corresponding article, which you can find the link below, you will see links to all of these learning management systems. And each system generally has helpful tips for students. During this time, you can learn how to upload assignments, how to view your grade, and other types of troubleshooting tips that can really help you throughout the semester. So take advantage of having early access if your course instructor makes your course available prior to the start of the semester. My next tip, tip number four, is to engage with your textbook. What does that mean? Find ways to actually interact with the materials in your textbook. One tip that I recommend when it comes to that is kind of really using those margins. I make several notes in my margins with questions that I have from the reading 
takeaways I have from the reading, or even definitions of words to help me remember what certain terms mean throughout my work. Another way to engage with your course textbook is to highlight and underline information that really stands out to you. Again, it could also be information that you have further questions about or that you want to look up further information about as well. And in looking up further information, you can access your university library to study articles relevant to the material in your course textbook. You can pull up videos that address the topics that are addressed in your course textbook. So there are many ways to enhance your learning and interact with the information in your textbook. Now, tip number five is to break away from screen time. When you are in an online course, you can spend hundreds of hours looking at your screen, whether it's your laptop, tablet, cell phone, et cetera. And that screen time could go towards navigating your course management system, reading the materials, uh, viewing videos, or even attending Zoom or WebEx lecture sessions. Therefore, when you have a break, use that break to break away from screen time. In other words, choose to engage in some type of activity that does not include your involvement with some kind of digital tool. For example, cooking, gardening and spending some time outside, painting or drawing, or simply spending time with loved ones. Now, tip number six is to take advantage of one-to-one -one sessions. Now, as a course instructor at a university, I generally invite my students to schedule one-to-one -one meeting sessions, and it can be about the course, enhancing their understanding about course materials, or it can be non-course related. It could be career related, future planning. Take advantage of those opportunities and the chance to gain mentorship from your course instructor. Tip number seven is to build your accountability and mentorship networks. This can be very helpful in decreasing the distance and distance education. It helps you to build relationships with your classmates and people pursuing the same degree as you. Through the accountability networks, you're able to stay on top of your assignments better, enhance your motivation by discussing your hopes, the reason you're pursuing this degree, what your plans are for that degree post-graduation. You may be able to process course materials together. So overall, it is really helpful to have those accountability partners to check in with from time to time. Now, an additional tip is to have a mentor as well. Someone who may be in the program, but just a year ahead of you, or even someone who has graduated from the same program you're attending. So they can give you great insights about their experiences and further tips on what made them successful that could also be helpful for you. Now, my last tip, tip number eight, is to save, save, save. When your class is delivered through a learning management system like Canvas, Blackboard, or Moodle, there may be a time limit to your access to that course. After the semester ends, you may no longer have access to the materials or even the assignments that you have uploaded. Your course instructor may not have access either. So it's important as you draw near to the end of the semester, be sure to save your information. And there are many ways to do that. You can download your information, say all the assignments you have completed, the documents that your instructor shared to a cloud application. There are also what we refer to as thumb drives that you can download information to. Always make sure you have enough storage as well. Some of you may be more interested in printing your information out, so you might have a binder that you can organize with tabs and folders to store your information in. But overall, remember to save because your access to the learning management system may be limited. So as always, everyone, I hope these tips have been helpful. Until next time, take care.